<laughs> Man, <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> It's a pleasure to, 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 to meet you. You come to me, man. <laughs> Is this part of the process? This part of my diet. Can I have some? Yeah. That one? Sure, sure. Let's go, man. Okay. Don't look at the camera. All right. I'm looking at you. Perfect. Eric. Could you introduce yourself for me and tell me a little bit about yourself? My name is Eric Biddens. I'm a recording artist out of South Florida, Derry Beach. No, don't Put in my 10,000 hours, I did a double. Wrote, record, produce, even design my album cover. Spending more than I was making, moving different from others. Felt my talent was enough that word of mouth would equal numbers. But you get hit with that toe, you soon as them flights book. Awesome. What's you just came back from Quebec Republic and Seattle. How is it traveling and performing in, in those audiences, to those audiences? To those audiences, how is it to perform in front of those audiences, to those audiences? How is it to be, to be performing in the audience? No, like to the audience. And if sometimes you end up in the audience, tell us about that. Well, from an audience perspective, I. I'm imagining this um, reciprocated, but from a performance standpoint, it's like, it's exciting for me to be able to get in front of my fans in real life that have been rocking out to my music like remotely for over the years. So yeah. you can really connect with the people, I feel like. It's like you touch their souls as you look at them in real life, not through cameras, but you look at them in real life and touch into their souls. You Do you ever feel their souls? Um, on occasions, I feel like soul feeling is a little deep and I tend to create a barrier between me and the fans. So it's more excitement, fun, but I wouldn't say like soul touching, like it's, it, it never get that um, in depth. Yeah, you'd like souls, I get it completely. There's this, this song you have, and I need to know where it stems from. It's called Holy Macaroni. Where, where, it's called that, but when you say Holy Macaroni, where's the cheese? Holy moly macaroni, way the cheese. They know the what? Did, did, did you buy macaroni and they forgot the cheese? Um, it wasn't meant to be taken that literal in the actual macaroni, like how you think it was a metaphor, like the macaroni being holy, where's the cheese, like it's something we need in life. It was, it was a little playful twist on it. Um, yeah, that's all that was. It, it, it was one of the things that wasn't nowhere near as deep as it is. Wait, can we, can we cut? Why are you, you making these, you making these expressions and it's like throwing my responses off. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm really not. I'm really not a videographer, I'm actually an artist. A band I've been working with fell apart. I'm actually undercover right now. Hey, shh. Just stop talking about that. Let's keep this thing rolling, man. Action. Purple gold fishes. When did you see your first purple gold fish? I never seen a um, purple gold fish. It's all metaphor. Am I still answering the question? I don't know why you stopped. So I'm still answering the purple goldfish question, right? I don't know why you haven't answered it already. Oh, because you just, you move. I thought like we was out. Uh, purple goldfish is, um, I never seen a purple goldfish. Uh, Physically or visually, it was, it's also another metaphor. I have a lot of metaphors in my music where I try to inspire, and this purple gold fish character is like, the purple gold fish character is basically like a, a good luck charm in some type of sense to give you power and encouragement. And We're gonna start that from the top. I was in the shot. Yeah, so we're gonna start from the top of purple gold fish, fishes. Tell me about the first time you encountered a, a purple goldfish. Purple gold, purple gold, purple gold. Hey, 
I actually never encountered a purple gold fish. It's this mythical creature that I created on this planet I have, Planet Coffee Bean. And when you see this, if you see, if you see this, if you see this, you asking me to do that? No, no, I'm sorry. I was listening. When you made that song, did you see the purple gold fish swimming in the air? I did not. At all? I did not. When I listened to it, I saw it in the air. I mean, you might have saw it, but there's no witness to attest to that. I thought you. I thought you don't. I thought you'd understand how much that. No, I don't understand nothing. None of this is even making sense right now. What? Ain't we done? Waiting for you, you left. You yeah, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. So, Highlighter. this is easy. Shall I be out of the way for it? Or? No, you were part of this. This is you. This is about you. Man, Eric. Is this still part of the interview? Yes. So I'm, one, I'm starting to wonder if this, this interview even about me. To be honest, to keep it G Funky 100. Uh, you listen to G Funky too? No, I don't listen to nothing. I'm just trying to do this interview. I'm this trying to talk about the new music I got coming up. Yes, How talk about it. This was going to be a dope opportunity. Yeah. And you kind of like dancing around the whole thing. So, I don't mean, I don't even know what we here for. What's up with the, in the faces too? Like the faces you keep making. So, what are some artists that inspire you? You amazing at just line of dressing and stuff. I've never heard of him. Who is him? You just, I asked you what your favorite artist is and it's, you said, it's funny how you don't address, how you don't address this stuff. I've never heard of this. T-Pain, my favorite artist. Got the body of a goddess. Got eyes with a big camera when I see you. I like to sing T-Pain songs in falsetto. But that is a favorite artist of mine, if you want to ask. Eric Biddens, what is something that you struggle with? Because, like, no one's perfect, even though, you know, you come off with this great persona and stuff. What's something that you internally have to battle as an individual? I mean, there is this one thing. I was born with a birth defect, and one of my feet, one of my foots is smaller than the other. Is this a safety? We're, we're in a safety, safety triangle. Holy shit. Holy shit. Oh my God. It's a bit there for me. It's, it's all right, let it out. Let it out. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. This is the time to get, it's okay. Let me pick up your glasses, it's okay. Calm down, it's fine. It's good. Let it, let it out. It's fine, we accept you for who you are. It hurts so bad, but it feels good to finally be able because not people know, not many people know. Yeah. I actually struggle with small hands. As you see me holding these glasses that make my hand look really small. And the fact that you have this s s small foot and I have these small hands 
I think we're brothers. <laughs> Ow. My, my foot, the left foot is small, so it, I don't have as much support. <laughs> I'm still holding your glasses. Because your hands can hold them much <gasps> better than mine could. Hey, your foot, you should buy a smaller shoe for your smaller foot. They don't even make shoes. <laughs> that are small and once I stole my baby nephew's baby shoe just to put it on. Hey, hey, you be strong. You These hands, they're strong. I know plenty of little kids that go on monkey bars with hands half this size and they get through all 40 racks. And you can do that too. This doesn't make you smaller than anything you are. And listen, listen. Listen, when you send videos to girls, these hands make everything bigger. Everything? Everything. You remember that. You're a Viking. I'm a Viking. I'm a Viking. <laughs>